Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, this is Magic Brad at the Magic Brad Show and here at an undisclosed location of the Magic Lounge. I'm not telling you where it is. So I've got a new <laughs> magician friend here. His name is Billy Diamond. How are you there, Billy? Hey, Brad. How are you? I like your logo in the background. That's branding right there, but that's not that's you. That's me. Here. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is about you. You know, oh, I could have put all my stuff up there, but I thought, let's put Brad up there. So that I got to ask. Sense. I got to ask Billy Diamond, is Billy Diamond a, a birth name or is that a brand? It is not. No, no, it is not. I've, I've done magic for over 40 years now and, you know, back growing up then uh, in the entertainment realm, of course, uh, that was pretty common to, to change your name. Uh, my real last name is uh, Swigger and it's German and it was actually Schwigger. but uh, Swigger, you'd get Swagger, you'd get all these out of it and it's like, ah, this is horrible. This a name like William Swigger is not going to work, you know. <laughs> so that, that's why I got like, rid of mine. Uh, my last name is Goodum, and it's Norwegian. And some people pronounce it Guidim. It's hmm. G U D I M. If I say it, they spell it wrong. If I spell it, they say it wrong. So I just went with Magic Brad. There you go. Makes it easy. It, it is funny though that in the way it works today is people yeah, people have all kinds of weird like real names and they use them. And they stick. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I guess uh, I, I guess our generation was a little bit different in in all that and uh, changing the names. So but, uh, it has been. A, you get on social media and I see all these people. Where's the Mikes and the Steves and the Debbies and the and the Sandras? You know, it's all these other <laughs> bizarre, weird names from all over the country and all yeah. the world. So, so what Absolutely. got you into magic forty years ago? Oh my goodness! Probably like any kid uh magician or kid uh seeing that magic for the first time you see my my doug henning shirt it was uh oh. a guy guys like doug henning but hey doug, doug didn't come to my school that would have been cool <laughs> but uh you know later seeing doug and it was it was what doug had always said and it's about that that sense of wonderment right yeah so as a kid you know like like most kids it's like wow and i remember that very first uh school assembly and just sitting there not just wowed but like i want to learn how to do this and of course the magician wasn't promoting hey you could be a magician too but like a lot of kids at that point you're just like wow and i i knew i knew at that age i was like this is what i'm going to do for the rest of my life I was probably the only one of the only six or seven year olds, aside from all the other magicians that came <laughs> came along to for that ride. Yeah, I was uh, about but, four or five years old, and the guy made a quarter disappear and pulled it out of me here in front of my brothers. I remember I was right at the front door. He did a little, they call it the French drop, did that, made the, mm-hmm. pulled it out of my ear, and I go, what? And the, ever since then, magic has been part of my life, and my brain has developed differently, I think, than most people's because of the magic. You sort of see behind the scenes of things. And magic, sure is so much different than other arts. Like music, you see what the person's doing. With magic, you see them throw a coin in their hand, but that's not what they're doing. Right. You know? It's so much different, and I think it makes us think totally different. But anyways, let's talk yeah. more about you, because when I saw your whole <laughs> branding for entertainers, that hits a place with me, because I'm a Gemini, so I work both sides. You know, I got the art <laughs> part, and then I got the marketing logic part. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, we need a lot more guys like you, I guess. <laughs> Being Gemini's, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you got to do twice as much work. <laughs> so when I started doing this full time through the 70s, 80s and 90s, in the 90s, I created a trade show for event planners to come and find all their resources. So that was my machine for generating leads. I had a couple thousand event planners from Target, Medtronic, Cargill, General Mills, Pillsbury, 3M, Honeywell, all come to me and say, this is how much money I got, and this is when I'm going to spend it. There's my lead list. So I got that marketing thing, you know, set Boy, up. That's a, dream. That's, a, that's a big dream for a lot of guys, actually, to be able to do something like that. Yeah, I wasn't chasing money. gigs. I, they were filling out a little piece of paper that Jeez. said, I'm Tammy from 3M. We're doing a company picnic for 3,000 employees at Tartan Park. We got a budget of $15,000. We want a pig roaster and a tent and a bouncy thing and a magician and a face painter. I go, there's a lead. Wow. That's but, um, fantastic. It's great. Now that we have COVID, there's no such thing as an event anymore. So it's all <laughs> right, Zoom right. magic. But I'm I, sort I, of I really hope, Huh? 
I, I was just going to say, I'm really hoping that in 2020, we get back to that. We get back to doing some things. And, you are the program. Uh, it's 2021 now. I, I, <laughs> can we rewind the tape? Oh, wait, it's not tape. Never mind. Can we rewind the digital video and try that again? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm having a hard time remembering that it is 2021. Oh, it happened uh, so fast. It, it happened fast. I tell people, I think it was the fastest yet slowest year in my life. Um, some, some, some parts of it, I guess, because of COVID. Just Pretty really glad slow. it's over. I had my event planner expo March 4th and then COVID came down and said, there's no such thing as an event anymore. So that's when I had to shift and do more online stuff like this and doing affiliate sure. marketing and promoting other things. But more, more about you. you, you say branding for entertainers. Do you work specifically with magicians or do you work with all entertainers? I, about 85% of my business is working with magicians, but mm -hmm. I cross over, I work with uh, a lot of ventriloquists, I've worked with comedians, jugglers, things like that, uh, clowns, um, a lot of, uh, surprisingly, a lot of part-time guys, and, and that's kind of the whole reason I do what I do as well, because they're the guys that if they want to get to their next step or next level, all those things are important, you know, for the, for the business side of the show. And uh, so I try to make things affordable and work with them in that direction. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I cover I cover the gamut. I don't work with a whole lot of musicians or anything like that. I'd like to, but uh, you know, it's it's all part of the art <laughs> and part of the entertainment realm. And uh, yeah, I, I I thoroughly enjoy it. And well, what got uh, you into the branding world? Did you absolutely have to do this? say? Do you want do you want me to talk about that? <laughs> because that would be a good basis. Well, you kind of wonder it's, because I know that a lot of magicians and entertainers they're of the artistic would that they would be the right sided brain, the artistic kind of thing, that they don't really know much about marketing, and usually their marketing materials are junk. You know, like cheap business cards from uh, those freebie thingies. And sure. Stuff. Sure. Yeah, I, I think to, to back up a little bit further in my magic career, I said, you know, I, I knew at that age, that early age, that I was going to be a magician. And I'll tell you what really changed it for me, Brad, is, you know, like a lot of people, I'd go frequent the local magic shop. Remember when we had brick and mortar magic shops? Remember that? Still got one here in Minneapolis. <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> they're, they're not too many these days. So oh. enjoy them while you can, right? Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, you have to enjoy them. Um, but uh, I walked into the local magic shop and there was an old guy there and uh, Joe, Joe would, he was just an amazing, amazing old magician. And I remember walking in one time and he's like, ah, here for another trick, huh? Cause that's, that's what we do as magicians, right? Like, <laughs> let me get my next fix. I need, I need the next trick. And, and boy, that hasn't changed much in the magic realm either. Everybody needs the next, the next thing. What's next? Uh, in that day, I was about 12 years, well, I was 12 years old. And uh, he says, I just got this book in. And I'm thinking, now, to back up, you know, that's, that's how you learn. That's how I learned probably magic in the very beginning was, you know, you went to the library, you checked the book out, you <laughs> if you want to learn how to do this, this is a good start. Uh, so, you know, magic, or the, the books weren't foreign to me by any means, but that particular day, he pulls this book out. Oh, I can't reach it, but uh, big book, this thick. I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks so overwhelming. But when I opened it, that was the next magic for me. And it was David Ginn's book on promoting me and you. And he had two books. He had promoting me and you and me oh, yeah. promoting you too. So, so David was a big influence to just look through that and learn how to market and how to how to do reply cards through the mail. That was a big thing then, of course. And we, right. you know that book's almost irrelevant now. And That's David and I kind of we, we laugh about that, but 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 it, it is because there's a there's a there are some really gold nuggets in that book alone that yeah, just yeah. you can postcards. Yeah, exactly. Still doing. So and 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 it's all about positioning, right? I mean, you 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 position it. Everybody's inboxes are filled with emails, so why not hit them with direct mail? And, and these days it's great because as you know, uh, maybe listeners don't, and that's that you can mail merge. You can, you can actually, when that gets printed, it actually has that person's name on it throughout, which is totally. great. So it's not just their address, but it's 
right to them, which is which is fantastic. But anyhow, I digress. <laughs> but uh, uh, I use a piece of software that's exactly for that. It mail merges and creates campaigns and automatically puts them into things. It works really, really cool for that kind of thing. Yeah, and and you know we could get off on a big bunny trail too with mailing lists and things like that. I remember you know, mo most magicians that I know have always done this, where they gain their list or they go through the yellow pa yellow pages. We don't do that anymore, right? right. <laughs> Once upon a time, kids, we actually had phone books instead of Google, right? <laughs> so, but uh, you know, so however they do it now, but the the simplicity of being able to obtain a mailing list and actually get online and get an actual physical list and cap it by these are the event planners I want or, or I want specifically this age group and I want them to all be men or I want them to all be women it's, it's amazing just amazing how much time that saves so I think and probably like you and and hopefully a lot of uh uh, viewers as well have learned over the years the importance of not trying to do everything the hard way. <laughs> I mean, there's, and you can't wear all the hats, right? I mean, if somebody's a pro in something, let them, let them do it. Well, let I think it's be. good to like hire someone. I'm gonna give you a little plug here. Hire someone like you that's kind of been there, done that, blazed the trail. Because sure, yeah. I do these these video interviews with magicians, and I ask them, you "Ever heard of MPI?" Mm -hmm. Usually, people haven't. Do, do, are you familiar with MPI? Yeah. A lot of people aren't. They'll do stuff like, oh, there's all these business people. I want to do corporate. So they'll go to a chamber of commerce event and do magic and hand out cards. What they don't yep. realize is you go to the chamber thing, that's a bunch of salespeople. You have to climb the ladder before you get to the planner. You go yep. to MPI or ILEA or HSMAI and all those organizations, you're right there with the planner. They're the person that hires you. Absolutely. You can get right yeah. to them. Or like trade shows, you can go right to the exhibit manager. You don't have to climb through the, the ranks yes. to find the exhibit manager that writes the check. Yeah, yeah. So the same thing with like branding. Um, if you have the branding, I'm not, you should, I should be listening to you tell me and <laughs> I should be asking you, but the whole thing about branding is making sure that you don't send your like kitty show thing to some corporate trade show guy because it's not going to resonate. Yep, you have to have that clarity in there. And, mm -hmm. and you know, branding and marketing really do go hand in hand. They are, sometimes they're apples and oranges, but, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, marketing is about what can I get right now? But branding is really about the perception that people have in their minds, uh, perhaps when they first see your material or see you, and it has to be a good one and it has to stick. So, so in my mind, branding is really about long to building those relationships along the way that mm -hmm. so that when they need somebody like you, you all of a sudden you, you're the guy that's top of mind. You're, you're the exactly. one. So, right, so you. like, uh, um, I use the analogy like Coca-Cola, the brand it's sugar water yeah. with bubbles in it. And they sell it for six bucks at a convention center. Yeah. It's because of the it's branding, amazing. it's considerably more. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Coke is really, they took that from the next level of just branding to it's a lifestyle, yeah. right? It is lifestyle brand. That's your thing, so, isn't it? Coke is life? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess that's what they say. Okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so, obviously we don't have as much money as Coca-Cola does to do all that advertising and all that branding. So, Well, you oftentimes know, I, you don't need it. You just need, I mean, these days you can go on to something inexpensive like Canva or something like that, or hook someone up on Fiverr and they can do a nice little logo for you and creating a professional image. And, you know, if it's a kid yeah. show thing, it might be the primary colors. If it's a corporate thing, it might be a tone on tone kind of thing, but. Yeah. And, and it goes a little bit deeper than that, obviously, Brad. I mean, you have to step back and, and realize not only who your target audience, excuse me, who your target audience is, but you have to understand who you are mm -hmm. and through understanding you. And I, I'll give you a good, uh, a good story here. You know, when I was growing up, I wanted to be not so much Doug Henning, but I wanted to be David Copperfield. Mm -hmm. What took me 20 years of my career to realize I'll never be David Copperfield. That's right. And it wouldn't matter how much money I had. It wouldn't matter any of that. But when I re realized, I don't think I had like this big epiphany moment. I think it was something that happened over the years where I just realized that, uh, why am I not just being me? There you go. And it was a whole different style as well. Copperfield was this mysterious guy and, and I'm not that. But you I was trying build to- build the brand around that, right? Yeah. Build the brand around that rather than trying yeah. to so, create a facade. So, you know, 
it's the same when you're talking colors and logos and things like that. It's, it's really, really important to step back and not just say, well, hey, I need a logo. It's really important to know the market, know also simple things like, and, it's, and to me, it's simple. It might not be to other people, but you know, what do those colors mean? How are they conveyed? Because you could have, right. a, you have a green, right? A green color logo that might not work for somebody or work for a particular market that you're trying to tackle. So, you know, branding is much deeper than just a logo or what you see. Cool. It's, it's really the essence and encompasses everything that you do, even into the way you walk in the room. When you do your work, do you actually do it for the entertainers or do you teach them how to do it for themselves? Both, both, because I, I have, am, I, like I have, amateurs, yeah, I have amateurs that uh, really need that help. They need that education. In fact, I have a lot of free tools on the website. Uh, the podcast is one of the free tools, but I'm constantly writing articles and just trying to get it into the hands of people so that they can, they can do it themselves. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's a, something I do where I have the articles and I have free resources, but then I also work with professionals I work with guys in Vegas and I have clients over the world that, you know, not so much in 2020, but <laughs> prior to that, you know, they're, they're, I'm Billy, I'm just too busy. I can't, and they'll hire me to do everything for them. So, and that could be a complete branding package. Um, the other thing I do, aside from just branding packages and logos and, and outlining their brand, uh, the, the whole complete package is I have a product line as well. And I've taken magic tricks and basically most, most people would think, or most magicians would think, yeah, that's for the, that's for the corporate guy or the trade show guy. That makes sense. But it's really for anyone. Oh, because totally. what, what, what the beauty is, is that it's, it, I, always, I always tell people it's like this. It's like product placement, really. Like if you watch a movie and you see a brand, right? That brand is getting to you in a subtle way, right? So it's the same with the tricks. If I can take a trick and have a... Uh, magician's name on it or a company's name on it. That's really what I love to promote is it's, it's not about you. It's about them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, it's a tough trail to blaze for so many people to understand that it, it really is about them. You, you can't just say, well, my value is, is this, I bring, I bring this. It's, you have to really right from the start, get them to understand it's about them. Well, you're that's, just, you're that's big in the trade brand. show world where people think they're doing magic tricks. They shouldn't be doing magic tricks. They're generating leads. It's a whole nother. Right. Thing but, Absolutely. Uh, so some of these yeah. guys that come to you and say, Billy, I'm busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I don't know if I can afford to do this or whatever. Maybe they're too busy being busy because their branding is off. Like as an well, example, those, if you have right. a car but and the car doesn't guys, work and you spend all your time fixing the car, maybe you need a new right. car. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> usually, those are the guys, though, that they have no problem spending the money to do that because they're they're working pros. They're already working pros. They're just trying to either rebrand or they're trying to tackle a new market. Uh, you know, um, I work with a guy right now is trying to tackle the cruise ship market. So we're we're looking at that whole picture and saying, well, let's figure out this brand along the way. And it's it's baby steps, you know. Most people think, oh, it's just something you can pretty much slap together and you're done. And it's not. It's 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 the easiest way to say it. It's like magic. I mean, hopefully your magic gets better over time, right? You have to start somewhere. And as you are in front of an audience more, and the more you do it, the better you get. And and branding is the same way, where you know, once you start sticking to that, it's uh, marketing and branding, the consistency of that. You're not changing along the way. So different, different than working in front of a and doing a show and doing a trick, you know, you might change that trick a little bit or say, oh, I got a better reaction from the audience. But you also can find those golden nuggets of of uh, uh, enlightenment with branding as well throughout because you're like, oh, this works so much better than what I thought or this this direction. For example. You know, say you're using a certain color on your website and it's not generating leads and all of a sudden you change it to something else. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, that was magic. Like I'm it's it's amazing. Just those tiny little There's things. There's a lot of psychological stuff that's happening. Yes, and like absolutely. you said, um, you should be doing what they want, not what you want. 
Because it's going to be totally different if you're using, say, a trade show, what they want, versus a um, like a corporate event, versus a strolling entertainer at a corporate event. That's two totally different things. Because sometimes strolling entertainers are just we had an extra five hundred bucks. We thought we'd have a guy walk around the tables. Or to do, yeah, yep, so yep. You're, you're sort of we don't care what you do as long as you have a deck of cards in your hand. You're walking around the tables. That's going to be fine. But if you're on the right. stage. And you're bringing up the CEO's wife. Careful, <laughs> right. right? Right. Something tells me you've been there. <laughs> you, you might have done that a couple of times. <laughs> not not the with the wife. I mean, the trade show and knowing that and just learning learning those traps along the, the way. The That's branding true. part is important because if you spend all this time and you do all this talking and you're spending a lot of follow up time on the phone and then you send them your kit and they look mm -hmm. at it and go what's with all these bunnies and hats and stuff we don't want our our sophisticated clients seeing these bunnies and hats yep it's a different brand different different psychological and, mindset and i always think it's a you know it sometimes i think as magicians and and i i i have to pull myself back too so as i say this i'm speaking to the choir here mm -hmm. is sometimes i think we get into this whole thing of even if we have a market per se and say it was uh, birthday parties. We just get into this whole routine. It's like our magic where not only you have to make the trick fresh every time, but you make the show fresh every time. But I think it's so important that we don't just look at it as another booking. We have to look at it as here again, it's about serving them. It has to be absolutely fresh for them every single time. Mm -hmm. And I might put something a little extra in that show that I want to do at another show just to make it a little bit different that they have an experience because if they have an experience, they're going to remember you and they're going to remember your brand as well. So now here again, it's, it's not always about just the visual things we see with branding. It's, it's those little things that falls into branding too. In my mind is making it a little bit special for them. So, but I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, and the, what's your next goal after you get this gig? Do you want a referral off of that? That might be something right. that's going to be included in the branding that you, sure. that you want that ball yeah. to keep rolling. A lot of people yeah. don't think about that kind of stuff. So your, yeah. uh, your branding experience, I think uh, a lot of people don't realize, I think I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of it myself. I like to do everything myself. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't, even though I can do I, stuff. I, like that in like Canva? I can't speak for you. I can speak for me. <laughs> but I, 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 I also believe that a lot of us are that same way that are especially magicians for whatever reason. I don't know why, but we, we, we want that control somehow. And it's not about being controlling. It's just somehow in our minds that the way we're wired, or at least how I'm wired, is I think, well, if I just do it myself, I know it's going to be done the way I want it done. Mm -hmm. And that can be a blessing and a curse. And it can be a curse because um, I remember one of the first uh, promo videos that I had to do for an agent. And I remember going into the studio and giving the guy a, a complete outline script. This is what I want. This is the camera shot. This is everything. And I was, I, I, I thought, well, I have to be in control of this. And it was a really valuable lesson for me after the fact. The, the promo video turned out okay, but in hindsight, I'm like, what if I would have just given him creative control? Said, basically, this is what I want. And allow him as the artist, allow him as the creator to, right. to do it. And it, So I get what you're saying. It, it is hard to release that control sometimes, but that doesn't mean... Um, that doesn't mean you have to relinquish all the control either. I mean, to me, it should be a joint effort. And it's the same with how I work with clients. You know, I don't just say, well, here you go. This is what you get. You got to go with this. It's, it, it's about this mutual understanding. It's I think about part of it might be the fear of them not getting what you're, what's in your head. You try and hold, hold, on, it. hold on one second. I don't know. Can you hear the dog barking? <laughs> That's good. That means it's real life. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> Give me one second. Okay. Sure. I'll entertain I'll the back. folks as you're gone. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys are enjoying what's going on here. Billy's got to go let his dog in or out. I think when the dog's got to go, you got to let the dog go. And he's back again, just like that. He disappeared and he comes back. Let's bring him back.
Nice round of applause for Billy Diamond. Thank you very much. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> the dog eat dog world. The dog is barking. I'm going to make the dog disappear in a second. Now he wants in. <laughs> Come hey, on. Puppy. <laughs> Well, I have a philosophy about that kind of stuff. They used to take this kind of stuff and they'd edit that out. I yeah. think more than ever these days with the internet, this shows that you're a real human being. So it makes I'm, a difference. I'm, we're doing a video right now. Yeah, yeah. Want to go like that? <laughs> That's my buddy. It's a big dog. <laughs> He's like another kid. <laughs> but, Very cool. I, go lay down, lay down. Now you want back out. All right. Yeah, they can't make up their mind. They're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. Is it a different? You're you're tethered to the with your earbuds there. You're you got the yeah, leash on yeah. the dog is free and you got the leash. Yeah, exactly. You got it. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Nothing like dead air, huh? That's uh, what we're we talking about. Well, branding or magic? I, both. Oh, we were. Yeah. Let me I, I let me get back to um uh, your original question, and that was, how did I get started in the branding? So yeah. I, I don't know that I ever addressed that. I said how my interest started to peak, but uh, never really got into that. So, uh, you know, in high school, I, I uh, by that time, I was doing, you know, Christmas parties and all kinds of things like that. And I'd make a decent money at that as a part-time guy and as a student. And uh, knew that I was, I definitely wanted to do magic full-time for sure. And uh, so I did, I pursued that, but my, you know, all the naysayers say, well, yeah, you, you got to have a real job. You have to have a real job. Like, this isn't a real job. You don't, I'm making money now. You don't, so you get it. And I'm sure yeah. that any magician that's listening totally gets that and is shot down. My little when are you going to get a real job? Even, even when I was full-time cross crisscrossing the country, I have people come up to me and say, yeah, but what, what's your what real do you job? Do what do for a real job? I used to just make, I was like, I don't know. One of these days, I'm, I'm serious. I, I probably should just get a real job. So, but, but so with that being said, as a student, you know, I was, I was strongly encouraged to find some sort of trade or do something. So uh, for me, I went to a vocational school. I went to high school for printing and I really fell in love with it. So uh, uh, that was always fun for me. It, it kind of, to some degree, it went hand in hand with marketing. And I thought, well, I can, I can get down with this. And there were times in, in life when, you know, when shows were down, it's like, hey, I had to pick up a part-time gig uh, working, working for a printing company. And uh, so I've done anything from running a big six-color Heidelberg press, you know, big long presses, to paper sales, to all kinds of stuff in between. Sure. Uh, so I always fell back on printing. Uh, but there, when there was a point after after I got married, uh, I was at a point where we, I was actually doing big shows. And my market at that time, uh, crisscrossing the country, was the Christian youth market. And basically what that means is uh, uh, churches, Christian organizations would hire me uh to, to do conventions so you know one day you might be in a church basement performing for 30 youth or you're in a big civic center performing to 15 or 20 thousand um long story short I, mean, I was doing really really good with that financially and i and i loved it it wasn't just a thing about going doing magic uh it was also sharing my story and that that might be a whole nother episode but uh i come from a background of having bipolar disorder anxiety i've had uh at this point in my life now this is years ago but uh had uh, four failed suicide attempts still here for some reason <laughs> but so my goal with that was to really just do my best to just share my story and try to be inspiring and combine my magic doing that Mm -hmm. uh, but so I was out, I was crisscrossing the country and, uh, boy, at that point we had, we had a baby and, uh, we would drive him 150 miles North of where we we're at here in Pennsylvania. We would drive back and it, if it was a road show, you might end up in Indianapolis and it was a seven hour drive or a lot of times they were fly, fly in, fly out shows where we would drop him off, come back home try to get a good night's rest and in the morning drive to Baltimore <laughs> another 90 miles the other direction go fly out do the show be gone a couple of days come back go get him come back 
to the house, have a day or two off, and boom, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And it took me about a year to realize that uh, this just wasn't the lifestyle for me. I, the money was exceptionally good. Most people think, well, you can't make money doing that particular market. I'm here to tell you very much differently. I, and I'm saying this, uh, well, people don't need a dollar figure. Let's just say I was, I was doing pretty good. Well, I got uh, to ask you, do you know Toby Travis? Absolutely. Toby and I have been good friends for a long time. Yeah. Really? Well, I, I used to do his opening act and drive his truck. Really? You're kidding. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you probably know Andre Cole then as well, right? Sure. Probably do Andre. Uh, wow. That's very interesting. I wonder if our paths ever crossed. Um, I, I used possible. to go to some of the, so well, yeah, well, that's pretty wild. Some stuff on the East Coast and some over like Montana and Portland. Yeah. Yeah. Toby's a great guy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big show, right? <laughs> he had a big illusion show. Yeah. He so. had this castle illusion. The thing must have wore, weighed like 400 or 600 pounds. I remember that. It was huge. <laughs> and I remember we did a show that was up three flights of stairs. We had all these college football kids or high school football kids carrying this 400 pound illusion up the stairs. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, well, that's that's when the thing fun about this business is the stories. Oh my gosh, absolutely. You bet, man. Yeah. But, but back to that though, those those are the times now where I'm like, you know what? I'd rather just walk in with the case and try to entertain somebody than to have a bit, you know, it's it's hard to sell a big delusion show these days anyway, unless you're copper filled. That's why I did his open the opening act where I just had my briefcase. I didn't have to have a bunch case of you go. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, totally. Little bunny trail. Makes total there. sense. You get into the printing industry, the whole graphics thing and the yep. imaging and the, the yeah, stuff, so, which totally but, makes sense. Yeah, so like I say, you know, we had a baby, and I said about a year in, I I called my California agent, and I said, I'm done. He's like, what, what do you mean you're done? Like this is news to me. I'm like, yeah, I know we have contracts. I will find you a good person, a, a replacement for me. But I'm not, I'm not enjoying the fact that I'm out speaking to other kids about important things, and I'm not there for my own kid. Right. And, right. and a lot of that was a self-recollection too, because I grew up, my dad was absent a lot. And so I was like, I don't want that for my kid. And best choice ever made in my life. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Absolutely a heartbeat. But, but you know, you want to talk about the business end of the show? <laughs> I got off the road. I was like, oh my gosh, now what do I do? <laughs> I mean, I didn't have a plan. There was no plan to say, I was just like determined I was getting off the road. So I guess for me, it was whatever you got to do. If you have to work at a convenience store, do that. But just at least you'll be there. Well, and there's be a present. Lot. I've got a kind of a similar story where I did magic all the way through high school. And then when I graduated, people said, you should get a job. So I did. I worked about three years and got laid off. And I thought, where's my gold watch? I thought I had a job here. Yeah. And I decided yeah, exactly. to be a full-time magician. And then, you know, you do these gigs. And so what do you do for a real job? And they don't realize that you wake up at six o'clock in the morning trying to get stuff together, try to book shows, and you go out and do the shows and don't get home till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Right. And then you do it again. They don't realize how much work is involved there in is being a magician. I had the scene where, you know, and that's, that, that's a perception that we've given our audience. That's, all, that's an illusion in and of itself, isn't it? Because right. they just think, well, you're on, you're doing the show, you're here. You just drove here and that was it. That's all you had to do. Yeah. So you yeah I wish it was that easy, but uh, yeah. So yeah, well, I'm getting this off. This is uh, so. this has been a lot of fun. I don't want to do this too long because there's that commodity of time. We don't want to take up too much time, but I'd sure. love to do some more of these things, maybe on, on niche topics yeah. and things, and maybe some of my on my live show. That'd be kind sure. of fun too, as I'm building this thing up, because um, absolutely, it's definitely an interesting topic that I think a lot of magicians. You know, there's a lot of up and coming magicians that are, I think, doing it wrong. The way they're getting attention is by exposing and revealing the secret, which is a whole nother topic that I did. Yeah, and that is, as a creator myself, we, we didn't touch on that. Maybe that's something we could touch on next time is where we're leaving off here is what was next for me? Uh, because I did, I became a creator. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I know what you're talking about as far as revealing those tricks and all of that online is just, uh, that's, that's definitely a whole topic of discussion for sure. It is. <laughs> 
when we'll get so, into that we'll get into that soon i love to have that yeah. conversation because i had great yeah. got some opinions anyways sure really i appreciate if you want to stay on i'm going to close this off and uh, ship it off to the universe and let people find it <laughs> okay. we'll have a little chat so i'm going to stop the recording well, thank you thank you for having me really time. appreciate it peace yeah.